Hi, it's Lauren Lockman from the Tanglewood Wellness Center in Costa Rica. I've been asked this morning to talk a little bit about blood pressure from the standpoint of when we measure blood pressure, what are we looking at? What do the numbers mean? Um, the people who have fasted with me know that I use this information to interpret what's happening in a way that most other people don't understand it. Um, some people have said I'm wrong about this, but we see the correlation over and over again. So, um, first of all, normal blood pressure is 120 over 80, and that's true. Well, that re that's that's normal cons by the according to the AMA, American Medical Association. Um, there may be other places in the world where they consider something else normal because normal means average. It means typical. 120 over 80 is not healthy blood pressure. My opinion is healthy blood pressure, the systolic pressure is anywhere from 90 to 110. And the diastolic pressure is going to be in proportion to the systolic, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But what, what are these numbers? What are we actually looking at when we're saying 120 over 80? What do those numbers mean? The original blood pressure machines, spignomometers, what they did was they used a glass column of mercury. And the, the, as they inflated the cuff, that pressure was actually being measured by the amount of mercury that was being supported. So we still use the same system today. And unfortunately, it's been adopted all over the world, so you can go anywhere and understand your numbers. But 120 systolic pressure, in fact, if you look at the machine, it actually says uh, mm millimeters Hg, millimeters of mercury. It's actually saying that when your heart is beating, if you have a systolic pressure of 120, that's the pressure in the artery when the heart is beating, when the pump is pushing blood. That number, that pressure is enough to support a column of mercury 120 millimeters high, which is 12 centimeters high, which is, let's see, um, four and a half inches or so, a little bit more than four and a half inches high for those people from the US and other, other places that still use inches, don't use the, the metric system. The diastolic pressure, the bottom number, is the amount of pressure in the artery between beats. Okay, when the heart's not pushing, there should be less pressure. Okay, the pump pushes, pressure's greatest, it stops pushing, less pressure. That's what that number is. And that number, again, it's gotta be in relation to the systolic pressure. Now medicine says that difference, what they call the pulse pressure, should be 40 points. 120 over 80, 110 over 70, 100 over 60, okay, 90 over 50, okay, 200 over 160. Well, no one should have blood pressure of 200, but people do. And, and the point is that it doesn't make sense for that difference to always be the same that difference is going to be relative to the pressure of the systolic in a healthy system. It's going to be relative. So as blood pressure goes up, the spread will and should go up. Okay? If your blood pressure is 200, the spread, the systolic pressure, the, the spread is likely to be 90 to 100 points. And that's appropriate. That's probably where it should be, something like that. If your blood pressure is very, very low, let's say 75, your spread is going to be less than 40 points, and that's appropriate. It should be less than 40 points, so you're likely to have a problem, okay? My estimate, and it's just an estimate, and I haven't proven this, um, but my estimate is that there's a rough, should be a roughly three to one ratio pressure to spread. So at, uh, first of all, at 120, I'd like to see a 50 point spread, 120 over 70. That's what I believe. If your pressure is as high as 120, not really healthy, the diastolic pressure should be around 70, not 80. Okay? The reason that medicine doesn't see this very often is because most people are severely dehydrated. And as your level of hydration decreases, your blood volume is decreasing. And for most people who have non-flexible arteries because of plaque, and when I say most people, let me clarify. According to a recent study, the average nine-year-old in North America's arteries are 30% occluded with plaque at the age of nine. Okay? At the age of 14, a study of, uh, 10 years ago said the average 14-year-old's arteries at that time 
were 40% occluded with plaque. The average adult, the average person who's 20 or 30 or 40 or 60, has a lot more plaque than that. Some of you have heard me tell the story before. When my father, uh, who passed a few years ago, a couple of years ago now, uh, well, more than three, when he had his first heart attack, probably 15 or 16 years ago, I don't remember now, I was standing in his hospital room when the top, one of the top heart surgeons in Washington, D.C. said to him, my father said, um, they were, he was about to take a stress test on a treadmill. And he said, I'm probably not going to do very well. And the doctor said, why do you say that? And my father said, well, because the last time I took this test was in your office a few years ago, and I collapsed on the treadmill. And the doctor said, I said, oh, that's right. He said, but you were okay then. Your arteries were only 60% occluded. Only 60% occluded. So a top heart specialist somehow thinks it's okay to have 60% of your arteries blocked with plaque. Now, whether it's 60% or it's only 30%, the fact is that atherosclerosis is called hardening of the arteries because the arteries become less flexible. Okay, they're lying with plaque. They cannot dilate when they need to. They cannot contract when they need to. And so as your blood volume drops, your blood pressure drops. Simple physics, okay? You got less fluid in the same diameter of tube, the pressure drops. The pressure drops, the difference between the systolic and diastolic pressure drops, and your heart has to beat faster. So I'm looking for this combination of factors which lets me know you didn't get enough water. Yeah, but I drank 18 glasses. Doesn't matter. It wasn't enough. Okay? It doesn't matter how much you drank. It matters what's actually happening. We can see from these numbers whether your body's getting what it needs or not simply in order to make enough blood, which is, I don't know, you know, maybe kind of important to have enough blood. Um, so this doesn't mean if your spread is where it should be, it does not mean that you're well hydrated. It means that your blood volume is basically where it ought to be. Because your blood, brain, heart, liver, lungs, kidneys, pancreas, thyroid are incredibly important vital systems and organs, your body's going to give preferential treatment to them. And those systems may have the water they need, but that doesn't mean your entire body's hydrated.